This is TOS Television, your digital force for African news network. I am Abigail Lukmadi and this is Africa Now. Somalia's spy agency has warned about an alleged plot by Al-Qaeda allied Al-Shabaab militants to attack the president and the prime minister. The National Intelligence and Security Agency said in the tweet that it had briefed the nation's leaders on the plot being hatched by the Al-Shabaab mafia. The agency did not provide further details but said it was pursuing everyone involved. Suspended Chief Imam of the National Assembly Legislators Quarters Mosque in the federal capital of the territory of Nigeria, Abuja, Sheikh Mohammed Nuru Khalid, has confirmed he has been appointed by the management committee of a new Jumat Mosque behind the Central Bank Nigeria quarters. Sheikh Khalid was suspended on Saturday for criticizing President Muhammad Buhari in his Ramadan preaching on Friday. He was quoted expressing his displeasure over the president's disposition towards the Abuja Kaduna train attack incident. The Imam had reportedly said he would not desist from telling the truth. To so judicial matters, the first trial addressing atrocities in the four opened at the International Criminal Court on Tuesday, nearly 20 years after the Sudanese region was racked by widespread violence that left hundreds of thousands dead. Suspected former Janja Weed militia leader Ali Mohammed Ali Abd Al Rahman faces 31 counts of war crimes and crimes against humanity, including persecution, murder, rape, and torture. Sudanese human rights activists have described the case as historic. A Rwandan appeal court on Monday upheld a 25-year jail sentence for Paul Rusesa Bagina, who was portrayed in the movie Hotel Rwanda, sheltering hundreds of people during the 1994 genocide, rejecting a bid to extend it to life in prison. The subject of the Hollywood movie boycotted court proceedings since March of 2021, saying they were unfair. The prosecution had requested that his sentence be increased to life imprisonment, but this was rejected. Judge Emmanuel said the 25-year sentence is equal to the severity of the crime he committed. Still on Rwanda. After nearly three decades since fleeing the 1994 genocide, a group of Rwandan refugees in Mozambique have begun their journey home voluntarily. In the 100 days between April and June of 1994, an estimated 800,000 Rwandans were killed. Millions more others were forced to flee to neighboring countries. According to Mozambican authorities, there are approximately 3,000 Rwandan refugees in the nation. This is your Digital Force Pan African News Network, TOS Television. You're watching Africa Now. Business and more coming your way after the break. So stay tuned. Welcome back in business. Kenya's government will pay subsidy areas to petrol retailers this week as it seeks to allay fears of potential fuel shortages and forestall a crisis, Petroleum Principal Secretary Andrew Kamau said on Monday. It will also find fuel marketers accused of hoarding petrol and diesel as it released 8.2 billion Kenyan shilling subsidy areas to petrol retailers. Kamau said that investigations into the shortage were being finalized, setting the stage for financial penalties and license withdrawals. The Democratic Republic of Congo's central bank has kept its prime interest rate at 7.5%, despite rising food and fuel prices due to the effects of the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, a statement from the bank showed. Congo's economy is expected to suffer repercussions of the pandemic and Russia's invasion of Ukraine through the rise in prices of petroleum and food products as the country is a net importer, the bank said also. Now officials of the government of Ethiopia and South Sudan have expressed their plan to interconnect the two neighboring nations through an energy grid. This was made known during a meeting between a delegation from the Ethiopian Electric Authority and South Sudan Minister of Energy and Dams, Peter Marello. Ethiopia's green energy capacity will generate an excess of 70,000 gigawatts while using predominantly environmentally friendly sources. Now moving away from business, 
At least seven people died, 14 were injured when a goods train derailed in the Southeast Democratic Republic of Congo, the second incident in the area in a fortnight, a local official has said. The National Railway Company has not yet said what caused the accident, but Congo's Transport Minister Cherubino Kende told reporters that an investigation is on the way to find out. Trails frequently derail in the vast Central African country. There are not enough passenger trains and few negotiable roads, so people needing to cover long distances often travel by freight train. After 170 days of South Africa being under lockdown, otherwise known as state of disaster, President Cyril Ramaphosa on Monday declared the country free and ready to return to normalcy. He announced in his televised address to South Africans that the national state of disaster on March 15, 2020, which empowered the government to take measures to prevent many people from becoming severely ill and saved countless lives, would be officially over from midnight. And that is it on Africa Now. For more updates, visit our website at www.tostvnetwork.com. Follow us and like our social media handles on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Remember to subscribe on YouTube. To stay with us and enjoy more programs on TOS Television Network, I am Abigail Ohadi. Thanks for watching.